What's up guys? We are back for the fourth and final Masters of the Universe Club Grayskull figure from Super 7 in this most recent wave. Today we're taking a look at Fisto. We've got this guy here in our standard brown mailer. As usual, we've got the He-Man logo blasted there on the front. Inside this guy, we of course have got our Grayskull jaw bridge slip cover. And then underneath that, you've got your actual collector friendly box with all the windows. You can see them there front and center. So as usual, great packaging and good collector friendly design. So let's do it. Let's pull this guy out and take a look. And here he is out of the package, our Club Grayskull Filmation Fisto figure. And this is the one that frankly I was looking forward to the least just because I don't have any real attachment to Fisto. That's not to mean that I don't like this figure or that I don't like the character. It's just that he's never been even close to one of my favorites. But this is a pretty cool figure and I very much am happy with this particular figure rounding out this wave because frankly it's been a pretty strong wave uh, and this is a good one to go out on. He is not without his faults but they're pretty minor all things considered. So let's get started take a look at our articulation. There's really nothing to be surprised about with this guy, save for maybe one big thing here. So we've got a head that can really only go back about that, not really much at all, and he can look down pretty decently. So if you get a, something down low, he looks down on them pretty nicely. You can rotate, of course. Arms go out, they rotate, bicep swivel, single jointed elbow, and we've got hinged and rotating wrists. Well, wrist. This is only a rotating wrist. Obviously, there's no hinge there. You have got a single brick of a chest piece there, so there's just waist rotation. Uh, legs go out, forward, backward. You can cut up there at the thigh. You've got a knee joint. We've got a shin swivel or a boot cut, whatever you prefer to call it. And you've got rocker and hinge down at those ankles. So he is, for all intents and purposes, a very standard Club Grayskull Filmation figure, but it's exactly what you'd expect. It's exactly what I expected. And he has exactly what I thought the fist was going to be. There's really no surprises there. Now, as far as the overall look of this guy, I mean, it's another instance where I think the Horsemen, where I think Super 7 have pretty much nailed the look. This very much looks like he jumped right out of the cartoon, and I'm pretty happy with how he turned out. This is going to be the one review where I do not have a comparison either, because I am one of those unlucky few, well, not few, there were a decent number of people, who had their orders messed up when it came to the Classics Fisto, and I never got one. And I probably never will, because I'm not going to pay $200 for a Fisto figure. So I'm going to be happy with this guy here, and frankly, I am pretty pleased with how he turned out. Uh, he doesn't have a lot of paint on him, all things considered. A lot of what he has is cast plastic. There is, of course, some paint. So we've got cast uh, plastic for the arms and for the legs and for the boots. And of course, we do have some shiny plastic. It's not really not that bad with this figure, though. And this kind of goes along with my thinking that the more... Uh, darker skin tones or the non-pale skin tones really don't matter so much when it comes to the sheen and the shine. This figure, even under my incredibly bright LED lights right now, they don't, it doesn't really bother me. It's not, it's not doing anything for or against it, I guess. So, uh, you know, your mileage may vary on that. Some people are going to be more subjective when it comes to that. But for this figure in general, I don't think that really matters. Um, we do, of course, have a pretty heavily painted chest piece, and it, it has a lot of that matte finish look. So so the chest piece is what I can tell is gray, is cast in gray, and then we do have paint on here. Um, it's kind of sloppy, I'm not going to lie, that's my one gripe with this figure really, is that it's kind of sloppy when it comes to this line work. So there's a lot of bleeding when it comes to the blue uh, all over the place, all over the front. I've actually got some up here on the neckline, and then on the back it's uh, kind of bled through onto the the lower part of the backside of his neck there. This, I mean, the back, it's the back. It's not a huge deal, uh, but I can't not see this now. So, you know, what are you going to do about that, really? So maybe watch out for yours. You might see a few little imperfections there because it is a pretty heavily painted area, especially compared to the rest of the figure. The fist, of course, is painted. It is, of course, the signature thing for our... Fisto figure, and I think it's sculpted pretty well. It very much, you know, looks like a humongous iron gauntlet. It's got a little bit of line work. It's pretty minimalistic, of course, and it is, it's covered in paint. It's 100% painted, so, uh, you know, keep watch of that. You might nick it and scrape it and scratch it, kind of like what we see with some of the accessories sometimes. It's just kind of what's going to happen when you have a very heavily painted piece like that, but I think it very much looks the part, and it looks just like it came out of the TV show. It looks like it jumped right out of the cartoon, which, again, with these figures is what I want, and it's what you all want to. 
Now, as far as the head sculpt on Fisto, I think he's probably one of the more detailed uh, head sculpts and faces that we've seen in this particular wave, just because he does have a lot of stuff going on on his actual face, not necessarily the head as a whole, but just in the face itself. So you've got the mustache, you've got the open mouth, you've got little line work uh, bits and pieces in the beard. So there's a, it's, it's kind of busy compared to, say, Mantena, who's a very very smooth-faced character. He does have uh, some curvature and, you know, some bone structure in there. And then, of course, you've got the painted brow, you've got the painted eyes, you've got the, the painted hair. It all very much, again, like I keep saying, looks like it came right out of the TV. It's got that kind of uh, reddish-brown hue to it, which I very much like. It's very, very quintessential Fisto from the cartoon. So I think this is another instance where the Horseman have absolutely nailed it. It's one of those things along with his color scheme and then, of course, with his fist that, uh, that really ties this guy together and brings his whole look uh, to the forefront of what we've got going on here. Now, as far as accessories goes, there isn't a great deal you can really give Fisto. Uh, honestly, I'd have been happy if he didn't even have any. I'd been happy with just the giant fist. Give him the most simplistic, pure filmation look that you can give him. But we do have this sword, which is very vintage toy-esque, so you've got kind of that uh, weird little eye type of design that's in the hilt here. It's all purple, which is very vintage inspired as well. Uh, it is painted, so you know you might run into a situation where you nick it or scratch it, chip some paint. I have not had that happen with mine, and I've pulled this sword in and out of his hand at least a dozen times today so far while I was messing around with him. So that's a good sign for this figure, because likely by now I would have chipped something, uh, which is what has happened with the other figures. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I do like the fact that you have an option. It at least changes him up a bit. So, you know, they didn't have nothing in the box. They gave him something, and I think this is probably the best thing that they could have gone with. Now, just like with She-Ra, when I had to see if she could fit onto Swiftwind, this is not necessarily as similar of a situation because we all really, really know that Fisto's going to be able to go into Stridor. Uh, I figured just to show it, uh, just to give you an idea of what he looks like. Frankly, I think he looks pretty good. You do have to kind of bend his legs a bit. I've always thought that putting figures in uh, this guy and like Night Stalker was kind of weird. I always felt like they weren't actually meant to go in here, but he definitely does sit inside pretty well. And he looks pretty cool in there, all things considered to me. So you've got him in there give you a little taste of what he looks like inside of Stridor, if that's how you want to display him. Obviously, this Motu Classic Stridor isn't necessarily Filmation-y, and, you know, frankly, it's just a repaint of Night Stalker, but he definitely looks cool in there, and a lot of folks go for the Fisto and Stridor thing, because they were always shown together in many instances. So, if you want to do that, you do have the option. So like I said, I think Fisto is probably a good figure to go out on in this wave. I really do think that in general, this wave is really strong. You know, I did have my gripes with the She-Ra figure, but frankly, she is still one of the better figures in the Super 7's line so far. So don't take that to mean that it's a bad figure. You should still check her out. Mantena, Grizzlor, excellent examples of what Super 7 are putting out right now. And I think Fisto is right up there with them. My figure does unfortunately have some paint slop here and there, but his overall design is really well executed and he he just plain looks like he jumped right out of the show. You know, I, I've said it a number of times already, that's the thing, that's why we buy these figures, and this is a good example of that. He looks just like the show, and that's all I can ask for, really. So that's going to do it for this look at the Super 7 Masters of the Universe Club Grayskull Filmation Fisto figure. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and until next time.